This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Hey, it's your weekly dose of Technolos. And we have lots in store for you this week. Yeah, we really do. And I'm really excited. Up. We have like Christmas colors going on up here. What's going oh, on? Oh, are you talking about crazy. the... Oh, you're right. I hadn't thought about it like that. We've got red, white, yeah. green, black, the OG in green. Um, when we started it's the USB Rubber Ducky project, one of the... the biggest barriers to entry was cost in that since we had redeveloped what we had originally designed on the Teensy platform yeah. uh, and had our first kind of bit of fun learning custom hardware manufacturing, we were doing really small runs and anyway, basically the long and short of it is economies of scale. Yeah. When we launched the Ducky a little over a year ago, it was like $80. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did our latest run. We, we went from black to red to white and our latest ones are in green. Festive of for the course. holidays, I guess. <laughs> and. Um, and yeah, we were able to you know get it down to forty dollars. That's awesome. And so hopefully we can just go ahead and continue doing that as we do larger runs, and then make these so that you can litter. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what you're talking about today with the USB rubber ducky. Well, I'm doing a little a uh, little Android phone hacking with Very USB cool. rubber ducky, and I've got some fun stuff in the forums. So I guess that's that's it for the yeah. The, so why don't we just <laughs> go ahead and uh, check it out, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Awesome. So it's been a little while since we've talked about the USB rubber ducky, and I figured we'd do a little uh, little what's up with that duck segment. So if you guys don't remember the USB rubber ducky, the concept with that is it's all about exploiting human interface devices, exploiting the inherent trust that the machine has with the human because of course we're the master and all that fun stuff. And the idea being, if you could only get access to a machine for just a few seconds, what could you do with it if you could sit down at the computer and type as fast as Superman? And so that's the whole idea behind that. And we started this project a couple of years ago with a development platform called the uh, USB Teensy, which is a um, kind of like an Arduino clone. And uh, told Iron Geek at ShmooCon 2010, and then he later went ahead and demoed that a month later at Outer Zone. And then since then, you know, the attacks have been referred to as a ducky attack or a TNC attack. Uh, again, the TNC just being like uh, an inexpensive, like $20 Arduino clone. The thing about that is it's programmed with C, it's compiled, you have to flash the device, and then through using that as a development platform, we were able to come up with what I think is kind of the best option for this kind of pen testing. And so we introduced it in September of 2011, and it's been a year, so let's kind of go over what the goals of the project were, where we are now, what the future is, and all that fun stuff. So the goal was simple, all about making the USB rubber ducky as simple as humanly possible. Didn't want to have to write any code, didn't want to have to compile anything, didn't want to have to do any C script or anything like that. So I'd say the uh, ducky script that we came out with was a complete success. It's all like, I mean, if you've ever programmed basic, this makes it look difficult. In fact, we put the entire ducky script on the back of the card. I mean, it's, it's that small and simple. So. Uh, I think that was a, a huge win. The other thing was we really wanted it to be, um, you know, easy to swap out payloads. And there's a lot of different options as far as like, you know, there's some stuff with the teens where you can do like dip switches. Um, and I feel like really with the inexpensive nature of like micro SD cards, you can barely even see that on camera. Paul, can you see that over here? I mean, <laughs> that's like, yeah, there we go. So as long as you can carry a couple of those around, you should be all good. And so I think that was a huge success with the project. Uh, we wanted it to be cross-platform and we really fell flat there, but we have fixed that. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. And we wanted it to be in a generic case so that it uh, looks pretty innocuous. Here's actually the Teensy. And you can see this is a, uh, a regular Teensy here with the, uh, with the adapter that you would need to make it a regular male A. And then this is a, uh, these are the ducks, and this is the duck in white, and this is a duck inside of a case. And it's that same generic case that you've seen time and time again. You don't have to put the decals on, that just makes it a little bit more elite. But you know, you can be pretty covert with this. And that, I feel like, which is a huge success. It looks and feels just like a regular flash drive, and so you know, no one's really the wiser um, if you're using it in a kind of social engineering context to do a little exploiting. So, 
Right off the bat, um, this was a this is the first time we really ever got into like custom developed hardware, and uh, so we had some pretty big ambitions as far as making it user friendly and pretty innocuous and uh, covert. But uh, as such, we learned a lot when it comes to manufacturing. And so the first problem off the bat, uh, right off, was that it was expensive. Uh, Eighty dollars a unit at launch a year ago. Um, like I said, we, we also had some problems where it was US keyboard only. That was another foresight where it's like, I had no idea. Like, I know it's such an ignorant American thing to say, but um, no idea that it, there are actually different key codes for different keyboards in different languages. And, um, and at the time, it was actually Windows only. Now, thankfully, a lot of this has been solved and also because of the community. And that's what I love about an open source project like this. So, the firmware's been updated, and I have to give right off the bat huge props to Midnight Snake in the Hack5 forums for his contributions because now we have, uh, in addition to Windows, there's Linux and OS X support, and we've had that for a while, and I think that, that's sweet, and I'm about to show you some other fun tools we can do with it. Huh? So, uh, and also as far as languages, US, UK, German, Danish, um, French, um, and uh, Norwegian, and there's another one that I, I don't particularly remember, uh, was it Portuguese? Anyway, uh, Swedish, did I say Swedish, Portuguese? Yeah, those. So we have a couple of languages, we're still working on that. And what I'm most excited about, uh, in addition to some of the web stuff that we're doing, is that it is finally, I feel like, inexpensive. It's, it's close to where I want it to be. In fact, I've got them all laid out here. This is the, uh, the original dev platform, the Teensy, with a, uh, an adapter on it. And then you can see the, the lineage of the original duck that was like $80. And then, you know, as we ramp up manufacturing and we keep changing the colors so we can tell the red duck and then the white duck until finally the latest version, the green duck. And we finally got it down to half the price of the original unit, down to $40. My goal with this project is to make it simple enough that anyone can implement a payload, which I'll get to the online stuff because I feel like we're getting there with that, and inexpensive enough that any penetration test or any hacker anywhere can get a ton of these and deploy them just as, as, um, as easily as you would just a bunch of USB drives because nobody's doing autoplay anymore. That's, uh, that's old hat, that's been thwarted, but what's beautiful about a hit attack is nobody's protecting against keyboard as a vector because you kind of need them to use a computer. And again, it violates an inherent trust that is so deep within the system. It goes back to like the very first computers, the very first personal computers with keyboards as the input and monitors as the output or even teletype. I don't know. I've never tried to plug this thing into a, uh, it's like a COBOL machine or whatever, but um, I, Maybe, maybe with an AT adapter, I'm not really sure, but anything with USB and that is pretty ubiquitous. So I'm really excited about that. So as far as addressing some of those uh, things to really spur some more development into this, I got really into developing kind of like a wizard. Uh, like I said, the ducky scripting language already pretty damn simple. I mean, this is, this is the whole thing. That's, that's the duck in a nutshell. And, um, and I think that's great for anybody that wants to get started scripting. But if you just want to deploy some of the awesome payloads that have already been done, uh, while the forms are a great resource, while the wiki is a great resource, I'm really excited about this. So this is usbrubberducky.com. And one of my favorite payloads is from Mubix. It's just this PowerShell wget and execute. And all this does is when you create this payload, uh, it goes ahead and um, and downloads whatever executable off the web you want, and then just executes. It's very simple. In fact, it's three, four, four lines of code. Uh, but it's so nice to be able to come over here, and I can just type in www.example.com slash bob.exe, and go down here and say bob.exe for the local file name, and click Generate Payload. And on the server side, it goes ahead and creates this, and I actually see the ducky script for it as well as, you know, I can change this if I want, um, but it's done. And I can click Download Payload, and now I get an inject.bin file. So if you can drag and drop a file that you downloaded over the web to one of these little micro SD cards, then boom, Bob's your uncle. Um, so I've gone ahead and added some of my favorite payloads to this. In addition to the PowerShell wget and execute, we also have the Wi-Fi backdoor for Windows. This is a really cool one that creates a software access point with the uh, name of AP that you want and then 
a very secure password, and then it even lowers the firewall so that uh, you, know, you can help those people out. Uh, there's also a reverse shell, and this is a very basic, beautiful re reverse shell where you just give it the port number, we'll say 8080, and the host, I don't know, I'll say 8.8.8.8, I don't know, now suddenly I'm Google. Anyway, generate payload, and you can see there's the entire payload. I can even come down here and see where we start injecting binary, but what's beautiful is right at the very end, that's pretty much the gist of it. This is where it changes. It actually changes the, the host and port number that I specified. So there are a bunch of other awesome payloads that I'm putting into this because a lot of them can really easily be tweaked to just some very basic variables. So I think that's really cool and I want to start adding some more of those. So I've been uh, getting into the forums and if you have some, I know that a lot of people at conferences have come up to me and say, dude, Darren, love the duck, using it in all these engagements and I'm always like, dude, give me your payloads, you know? Because uh, it only makes the, the community better and everything better for everyone. So um, I encourage you to check out USB Rubber Ducky for that. But what I'm super, super, super stoked about now is Android hacking. Okay, get this. I got totally inspired when uh, Cause was uh, here and we were talking about um, the, the Cause cable. Gosh, I wish I had a Cause cable nearby. Anyway, um, uh, it's... Um, the, the idea with that was that you could take... Yeah, yeah, yeah throw me that, Paul. You're wonderful. Um, and the idea with this was that you could take, you know, your phone on the red end and then the black phone, the, uh, the black end goes into the victim phone and then you can do some really cool Android hacking over ADB. Now, uh, as Cause explained, ADB needs to be enabled on your victim phone in order to go ahead and execute that attack, which got me thinking, what's the quickest way to get ADB enabled? So let's take a look at that. And I have a payload here. And just to kind of show an example, I've got an Android phone set up. This is a uh, Galaxy Nexus running the very latest version of, um, of uh, the Android operating system. I'll show you here. It's got the Swooshy Woo. And um, so that's 4.2.1. And I have a, uh, a keyboard here. So what I'll just do to kind of set this up is plug my keyboard right into the Android phone. And this is, this is what I love is I have to do this because it's the, uh, it's the most basic like, haha, remote shell or whatever, not, not even remote shell. I mean, I've got physical access to the device. It's already been owned. But if I just hold down the Windows key and hit A there, calculator, and then escape is the back key. So you can plug a USB keyboard into an Android phone as long as you have a uh, OTG adapter all day long and start throwing key codes at it and find really cool stuff. I've already found like Windows M opens up Maps, Windows G opens up uh, Gmail, which is cool because then you could like send an email from the device with all sorts of nefarious stuff like attachments, like attach the latest photo in the gallery or something. I don't know. could be fun. So let's talk about setting up um, ADB with, uh, with, what is it called, with developer options in Android. Now, I had at first actually demoed this at DerbyCon a couple months back when, um, when Kaz was showing off his research. And since then, I've actually had to update this because I guess somewhere along the line, uh, Google got savvy to this or the Android team has figured that not everybody needs access to developer options. So way to go, Kaz. Anyway, um, but they're not completely gone. I've already done it on this phone, so I can't show how to do it again without having to format the phone. But if you've got a newly updated phone on 4.2 uh, uh, yeah, and above, uh, go to settings and then scroll to the bottom and you'll see that developer options isn't actually there. But if you go into about phone, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the kernel version. Tap three times on kernel version and hit back and now developer options are there again. So it's like, okay, cool. Something I can do programmatically. So let's just go ahead and do that. Here is uh, this one's a white one, not the, the latest gen green ones. They're still the same firmware. But let's go ahead and plug a duck in and see what happens. Go. And the first thing it does is go to the home screen. Of course, it's already there. It goes to about phone, enables that. Even if it is enabled, it doesn't matter. We enable USB debugging or developer options. Now we enable USB debugging and go back home. And so all of that takes about 10 seconds, which is pretty freaking cool. I have another one here uh, that I would figure would show uh, would be really neat to show off because if you couple it with like a Wi-Fi pineapple, you can do some pretty neat stuff. 
Um, and of course, again, the sky's the limit when it comes to this stuff because again, physical, uh, uh, physical access, all bets are off. And the faster you can do it with physical access, the better. Okay, so this one's another one, another payload I've set up, and this one's really fun to do with Wi-Fi Pineapple. I'll plug this in here. It's again gonna go to the home screen. So if I had an app, app open, it'll just cancel that out, come into Wi-Fi options, go down to the end, and type in, I've been owned, and add it as an access point. And now, my phone is going to be looking for an access point called I've been owned, which the Wi-Fi Pineapple is gonna say, oh yeah, let's be friends. Um, I'm really excited about the kind of development that's been happening with the uh, USB rubber ducky as of late. Uh, I wanted to show off a couple other things. For example, there's been some improvements to the uh, SAM payload, so I encourage everybody to go over the forms and check this out. Um, the idea with this payload is, if you're familiar with, we talked about this months and or years ago, but uh, you know, being able to crack a Windows uh, password by getting the SAM file, the uh, the system you know file, and uh, and going ahead and running that through like John the Ripper or any of your other more advanced cracking programs. That's totally awesome, and I encourage everybody to check that out. Again, mad props to Midnight Snake, who's been working on the firmware, and you can find his Google code page linked from usbrubberducky.com, where again, like I said, the languages have been added. He's got a uh, reverse of the, of the um, duck encoder, so you can inject .bin files and turn them back into ASCII. He even has things for you know, mass storage, and multiple payloads was just added. Uh, so mad props again, because this is really cool. He's got a... Uh, a mode where by plugging in the duck and hitting the button in combination with caps lock or scroll lock, you can include multiple inject.bins so you don't have to carry around multiple SD cards. Uh, personally, I like the SD card approach because they're super cheap, but, um, but either way, uh, I'm really excited about all of the fun stuff that's happening with the uh, USB rubber ducky and just in general with hacking on the, uh, on the HID kind of the hit attack vector. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with the social engineering toolkit with this and we're working to port those payloads because it's the same kind of stuff we're doing here into uh, usbrubberdocky.com so you can go ahead and generate those. Like the meterpreter, like you could just, just take a meterpreter and, and use it in conjunction with my favorite script, the three liner, the PowerShell W get and execute. Thank you, Mubix. Um, so with all of that said, uh, I'm really excited about what's quacking. Head over to usbrubberducky.com. Uh, hit up feedback at hack5.org. I will see you guys in the forums. And with all of that, uh, let's take a quick break. And we get back, uh, Shannon's going to be checking out some, uh, some fun ways to optimize Ubuntu. And uh, I guess it would just work on any other Linux distro. And then we're going to wrap this up. So I will see you guys on the other side. You work in IT? I know I did, and let me tell you, it is constantly jumping through hoops, setting fires, putting out fires, making sure those fires don't start in the first place. And all of the while, you're trying to juggle these different tools and you're trying to get things done quickly and not having to duplicate data entry. So let me tell you, go to Assist from Citrix. They're the leader in remote support and they've got this new tool that integrates everything into one easy to use platform so you can work faster and more efficiently. GoToAssist includes three essential tools that let you customize your needs. They've got GoToAssist Service Desk, which allows you to log incidents and track the resolution. They've got GoToAssist Monitoring, which proactively identifies those fires and lets you know so you can put them out before they become a huge deal. And then they also have the remote support, which allows you to do live or unattended support to any platform like the PC, the Mac, even mobile devices from anywhere to resolve those issues quickly. I know I was using at least just the remote support stuff uh, way back when I was doing IT in DC, and let me tell you, it saved my bacon. So get this, sign up for a special 30-day free trial, visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5. That's gotoassist.com, promo code HAK5.